Hello everyone, welcome to our Ask Me Anything webinar with Zello's founders, Matt and Jeff. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about Zello's history in case you haven't heard about how we started. We started in 1997. Our company has been helping districts across North America become college career and future ready. We started out as a really small three-person company and have since then grown to more than 150 people, supporting districts from coast to coast. Today, Zello supports thousands of districts and millions of students. Our program is used across the country to help all K-12 students, regardless of background, ability, or pathway, build personalized plans to help them reach their full academic potential and achieve future success. And without further ado, I'm gonna hand it off to Matt and Jeff to introduce themselves. So Matt, why don't we start with you? Tell us about yourself. Sure, thanks Philza. Um, really brief. So I, I guess one of the shocking things for me is that I've been doing this for the last 25 years. The time has flown. Um, and I still feel there's, there's lots to do. Um, just a little, a little side note here. Uh, Jeff and I are, are co-founders of Zello. We've both been there from the beginning. And I was just thinking about it today, remembering back to um, sitting in my parents' kitchen with Jeff, talking about different ideas for what we might um, really dedicate ourselves to. And the idea of helping kids plan for the future uh, was extremely compelling. And if I look back on that day and think, did I have the thought 25 years later, we still might be doing this? Um, I don't think that was really in our heads, but to be honest, I'm, I'm not surprised. It's been an a, a awesome journey and um, super excited to see all of you online and, and interested in what we're doing at, uh, at Zello and looking forward to sharing um, all that is happening and, and hearing your questions as well. Great. Oh, thanks a lot for that memory, Matt. Uh, and I think you're absolutely right. We could never have imagined we'd be doing it 25 years later, uh, let alone a, a year or two later. So we're, we're very fortunate really to have the opportunity to be working in this field. As the information says on the slide, um, you know, I really kind of fell into this area through my own personal career crisis, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, you know, it's an endlessly challenging and interesting field, and just feel very fortunate to be part of it. I just want to thank all of you uh, for taking the time to join us today. We know this is an incredibly busy time of year, especially this year. Uh, but we're really excited to have the opportunity to share some uh, new information about what we're adding to Zello and, of course, answer any questions that you might have for us today. So to start, we really need to acknowledge that it's anything, anything but business as usual. These truly are unprecedented times. Um, you know, as we've been working with school districts over the past many months, there are a few things that have really stood out to us that we just wanted to, to be able to mention. Uh, firstly, I think we've all really been reminded about how central and invaluable uh, the education systems are for our communities. It's very easy to take um, school districts for granted because they're just always there for us. Um, but I think we've seen really quickly how difficult it is for us to function without um, regular education happening within school districts. And we all quickly become legitimately concerned about the well being of students and families. So I think, I think we've all been reminded about how critical the school systems are for us. And secondly, we really sympathize, I think, with the dilemma that educators face right now, trying to balance personal, staff, student, and community safety with the need to educate and, and begin to work with students. These are very, very difficult decisions and um, you know, don't envy people who have to make those choices. The other thing is, is that we really marvel um, at the hard work and creativity and thoughtfulness that districts have put into back to school planning. Normally at this time of year, we're in the mode of just reacting to what districts bring to us because we know how busy they are. Um, but now later in needing to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C, and each of those plans is much more challenging to execute than normal back to school. And it really is an unprecedented situation that's required so much extra work. Um, you know, we just want to assure everyone that we are here to do our little part as best we can. And if there's anything that we can do to support you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you know, we're, we're here to help. Chances are that we're working with other districts who are facing similar kinds of challenges to, to what you're facing. And we'll be happy to share uh, all the knowledge that we may have. 
So please lean on us when you can. So they say when, you know, when life gives you lemons, you need to make lemonade. And we have been making a lot of lemonade together uh, with our customers this spring and summer. Very quickly, remote learning went from being something that was nice to have to being essential. Uh, and we were all thrown onto a very steep learning curve. When districts started to close in the spring, we immediately began working very, very closely with, with the educators who we normally work with. And it was just an intense period of collaboration and sharing for us. One of our goals was to build a sense of community. We wanted to connect educators across the different markets that we serve so that they could share information and share best practices. We convened um, nine roundtables, virtual roundtables with over 20 expert speakers. And we covered topics from social emotional learning to district communication, to budgeting and everything in between. Um, so you, you may have had a chance to participate in one of those or perhaps even, even be a panelist. Uh, if you didn't, all of that information is available for you on our blog. Please feel free to visit and, and view any of those sessions and all the takeaways that came out of those events. The other thing that we did was uh, run a series of how-to huddles, which were really practical tips and suggestions uh, for how best to leverage Zello to support remote learning. And again, all of this content is archived this time within Zello support. We had really learned a lot, we felt, working with districts um, on coping with, with remote learning through the spring and summer, and just wanted to share some of the key takeaways for us. And, and I think before we cut in, the last, the last thing I'd maybe mention is we really saw districts doing a great job of using Zello lessons to support um, social emotional learning. And we feel that that is especially appropriate at this time. The kinds of um, learning that happens through the lessons obviously supports making students future ready, but there is a lot of crossover uh, with social emotional learning in terms of building self-awareness, self-management skills, um, responsible decision-making, et cetera. And so some of the most successful districts that we saw during the spring and summer were using lessons extensively to support social, social emotional learning. The other thing that we saw successful districts doing, and we're we'll talk a bit more about in a second, is really setting clear expectations for students. When you can't be around students all the time, checking in on them, you really need to provide very clear guidance so they know what to do um, and, and can stay on task as much as possible. And so again, you know, that involves uh, setting a, a scope and sequence of lessons grade by grade so that students know exactly what they need to do uh, when they log in. And then related to, to that is um, making more extensive use of the assignments. Assignments is another way to, um, to give work to students outside of a classroom setting, make it visible for them, make it easy for them to access and again, set very clear expectations. So those are tools that we saw districts lean on quite heavily. The third one I'll just mention is the reporting. Reports really allow you to keep on top of what students are doing when you can't see them every day. And so you're able to identify students who may be slipping through the cracks, who may not be meeting expectations, and, and then um, take steps to, to help those students. The other thing that reports give you is some insight into what students are interested in and what they're doing, whether it's something like a safe career or um, a new career goal that they've added, to be able to view that information in reports and then send appropriate messaging to those students can really make them feel like they're still part of the school community, that people are watching and caring about what they're doing. So those are some of the best practices that really emerged, um, as I say, over the spring and summer, and I think they're absolutely relevant for the coming year as well. So how will we thrive together in 2020, 2021? One of the things we know is that we, we have a really solid foundation to build upon. Um, student engagement with Zello is strong, and the numbers bear that out. We see students staying on the program for long periods of time, and we see significant usage outside of school hours, including on weekends. 
And this data really backs up what we see in our user testing. Students connect with Zillow. They find it engaging. They find it relevant. These are things that we know. And so we are starting from a good place where we know that we can engage students. We know that they want to use the program. We know that they find it valuable. And then we have all the learnings from the past few months to apply in terms of best practices. So we are starting from a good place. At the same time, we recognize that this year you will need more. It's become clear that the experience we had with remote learning in the spring and summer is not going away. And the bar, if anything, has been raised. Uh, the work that we did collectively to go above and beyond to support students is now what is expected. Um, for students to be able to continue their education. And from the questions that we had uh, as part of the registration for this session, we know that these topics are still top of mind. There was a question from USD 260 that read, how do we motivate students if remote learning takes place? Similarly, from Lux School District, how can we gain student interest when we can't meet with them one-on-one -on -one to explain the lessons and get them excited to explore? So these are the kinds of questions that we want and need to, to answer together. Let's, to start, let's take a look at some of the things that we've been working on to better meet the needs of your students. And Matt has given you a tour, I think, while I've been running around trying to find a computer of the vast majority of those things. The one important piece that uh, I was supposed to talk about is the new student dashboard, which some of you may be aware of because we've been promoting it and you probably also know that your district has a decision to make about whether or not to, to move ahead with this dash, dashboard. The importance of the dashboard is that it makes student work incredibly visible. We talked about being able to provide a scope and sequence of lessons and make it apparent to students what they're supposed to do. You can see underneath the lessons heading the specific lessons that students are expected to do. In the top left corner, you can see their completion status. For this um, screen capture, 75%, the student has completed 75% of the lessons for that year. And then the assignments that, that um, schools and districts may want to create are much more prominently displayed uh, on this page as well. So making everything really easy and visible when students log in, they know exactly what's expected of them. And then we've also made sure that the main navigation elements in the program that are available in the top menu bar are also conveniently available in this new larger menu. So for example, you can jump into a particular section of About Me or a particular section of um, Explore Options. So many districts have already moved to this new dashboard, but the way we're releasing it is districts need to opt in. We don't wanna force this change on anyone, even if change is good, sometimes it's uncomfortable. If you haven't indicated that you'd like to move to the new dashboard, but believe that you would like to, please let us know um, if you can this week. You can uh, communicate with your success manager, or you can send an email into uh, help at zello.world, and we'll get you pointed in the right direction and make sure that this is activated for your district. Thank you all for being here again. Uh, tremendously exciting and uh, great to see people from all over. As I was looking at the chat, there's a lot of people I wanna reach out to that I know and wanna personally say hello. I, I just am not gonna be able to do that, but uh, great to see all of you, especially people that I've worked with and uh, look forward, forward to meeting more of you in the coming year. Um, what I wanted to be talking about first is just things that we have uh, been working on and, and have been released uh, so that you're aware of them and, and know a little bit about the background and what they're aiming to achieve. So the first area that I wanna focus on are the college planning tools that we've been building out for our, uh, our districts in the United States. And last year we did a tremendous amount of work in that area. Uh, as with everything we do in Zello, we started with research and we're working closely with students and educators to really understand uh, what tools and information they needed to make the college application process easier. And from that research, really what we heard was that there's an overwhelming number of dates and requirements that students have to keep organized. It's very, very challenging. Um, and as part of that, there's also information overload. And this information overload can create paralysis and it can really create barriers to, to student progress. 
Um, and then finally, what we could see is that the, the college and scholarship application process uh, really puts a high demand on already overloaded counselors. So we took these insights into account in terms of how we were going to expand our college planning tools. And we really wanted to focus on two things. Um, one was like helping students stay organized and take ownership over the process as best we could. And the second was to focus on how could we help save counselor time. So if we just go forward to our next slide. Um, I wanted to talk about what's happened within Zello. So the first step we took was to move all the college related tools and resources into a single home. And that's now labeled as college planning. And this is accessible single click from the student dashboard landing page. And on that landing page, you can access the three key features that make up our college planning section of Zello. So first, everything to do with college applications is one section. Uh, second, we have a local scholarship search, we'll explain a little bit more, and also our college knowledge hub. So those are the three things that make up college success and college planning for Zello. So if we first look at uh, the application piece, this piece was built close in close collaboration with students. And really what we we're trying to do is try to help relieve that application season anxiety by making sure key information like deadlines were right at the top of the page and also providing students with a space where they could keep track of everything related to their college application so that they could feel in control. And then when they complete a college application, we wanted to reward them. So we have some really nice confetti that showers down from the screen. Um, so a little bit of fun and uh, also just keeping students engaged and, and motivated to keep going. So that's college application tracking. Uh, second feature that we introduced related to college application tracking, and this just launched a couple weeks ago, is our integration with the Common App. So this is big. Um, within Zello now, your grade 12 students can request um, that we send Common App transcripts and letters of recommendation from right within Zello. And this is gonna save your counselors and teachers time as well because the Common App profile and all the forms that they need to complete for a student, that can all be done in Zello. So your counselors no longer have to flip back and forth between Common App and Zello, they can do it all in one place. Um, something just to keep in mind is that Common App needs to know uh, what platform you're going to be using in July. And so we had submitted a list of those districts that said we wanna use the Common App integration. Um, so we, the, the deadline has passed for this year, but if you're interested in using the Common App for next year, please let us know. We will get you on that list. Um, but they're just very tight timing with, with how Common App manages things. So uh, any, in any case, very excited to see that development and hopefully you guys are excited about it as well. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about is our Knowledge Hub. So along that college bound journey, students and parents have to make some pretty big decisions and they have to complete tasks that can sometimes be a once in a lifetime event. Uh, these things can be confusing. So in order for them to be successful, there's a fair amount of information gathering that has to go on, um, but there's so many sources of information. It can be quite overwhelming and it can be hard for schools and counselors to get the right information into uh, students and families' hands. So our focus with the Knowledge Hub is to save counselor time by providing vetted information and content that, that enables students to figure things out for themselves. So our research team worked closely with counselors, students and parents to understand that whole college bound journey and to try and figure out what are the biggest knowledge gaps and how can we best present college related information so that it's engaging and valuable. And so what we found was the most important topic where there were really the biggest gaps is around um, students and parents understanding their options related to paying for college that really seemed to be the biggest challenge. So at launch and now available within the Knowledge Hub are articles that focus on exactly that. So uh, we have short form content, really interactive, beautifully presented, that covers financial aid, FAFSA, scholarships, and loans and grants. So that's available now and super straightforward and super engaging for your students. So that's the Knowledge Hub. 
And then the final piece that I want to talk about is the local scholarship piece. So um, what we know is that, that obviously paying for college is a very important part of that college going journey. And we know that students are often um, making their college decisions based on where they can afford to go. And we also know that to pay for college, uh, families rely on a mix of funding sources. Um, they look at savings, scholarships, uh, grants, borrowing. And what we found in secondary research is that 65% of families will fund their child's uh, college experience with, with using scholarships to cover about 30% of that. So it's a really top priority. Scholarships are obviously super important, um, but finding those scholarships is not easy. And what we also saw was that local scholarships, meaning scholarships that the district is aware of for that local area can often represent high impact and high feasibility opportunities because those opportunities are more targeted and there's a smaller pool of applicants. So we decided to focus first on local scholarships and providing a place where counselors can streamline their internal processes by centralizing all of their local scholarships in one place easily accessible by students and parents so that they can get access to those super valuable financial aid opportunities. And then you as a counselor as well can see which applications students are interested in and, um, and monitor their progress. Next, I want to talk about our elementary product. And for those of you who may not be aware of the full Zello offering, we now have a Zello for Elementary product. It was launched about a year ago, and quite honestly, it has received really rave reviews. Um, featured here are the Zellians. Uh, these are the characters that populate our elementary product. Uh, from left to right, we have Marsh, Dart, and Dax. And so as you get a bit of a sense with these characters, um, we've, we've built fun, we've built excitement, and we've built stories into this experience. Um, really what we were trying to achieve was the building blocks student, students need for life and career development. And we also know from research that getting students started earlier, the earlier they start, the better the outcomes. So for us, elementary is a really key part of that. And we also feel like by starting at an early age, we're gonna allow ourselves, we're gonna allow students to create a strong foundation at an age where they are still quite impressionable. So we look forward to what we have in that elementary product. We use the same model we use in our six to 12 product. The whole experience is driven around three pillars of about me, understanding yourself, exploring your options. In this case, it's careers, and then also goals and plans. And in the about me section, which you see featured here, this is a place where students can personalize their accounts to make their space their own and document the qualities that make them unique. Uh, they can enter their skills, they can enter their achievements, their interests, and they can really paint a picture of who they are. And we also encourage them to reflect on their feelings about school. They can rank their favorite school subjects. They can build a storyboard, a multimedia portfolio of who they are and populate that with artifacts that they've created or even websites or compelling content that they found on the web that tells their story. In terms of the career content, uh, we have over 200 career profiles, uh, all designed to help students uh, teach them about different professions. Everything has been written at a grade three reading level. We wanna make sure that it's accessible to all. And through reporting, you as an educator are gonna be able to see what careers your students are interested in, get some insight into what they're thinking about, which can be fun. And the other thing is that the careers database that we have in the elementary product is consistent with what we have in the 612 product. So as your students transition into higher grades, there is a consistency there. Um, finally, I just wanna mention a little bit about um, the missions. So in, in the six to 12 product, we have lessons. These are transformed into missions. And these are story driven missions with the Zellians um, where students can learn career development. They can learn about social emotional issues and concepts and also academic concepts. And these missions have been developed by looking at all the elementary curriculum we could find in this area, looking at national counseling frameworks like ASCA's mindsets and behaviors for student success to make sure that they're really grounded in research. Um, the, less, the missions themselves also prompt students to complete activities in Zello, and it helps them expand on what they've learned through their experience in the product. Um, as students work through these missions, they can, it's saved as they progress. So if they need to stop and come back to it, that's easily managed, which is really great for remote learning, 
So if that's a case where they're obviously they're using it, if they're using it from home, they can start and stop without any problems. And if you're familiar with custom lessons and assignments in the 612 product, well, this is now available for Zello in elementary. So if you've been looking to want to create your own custom lessons, you can now do that as well. And just a final reminder, we have introductory pricing for Zello for elementary, and that's going to end at the end of August. So if you're interested, just contact your success manager uh, for a demo and, uh, and if you like a quote. So I just want to take a, a, a moment to pause and look at one of the questions that was submitted for, uh, for today's session. I, I really love this question. Um, just have a quick read. And I found this a really great question because it allowed me to just think about, well, what are my dreams for what Zello can actually achieve? Um, so every day we are thinking about what can we do to help students succeed? Um, I think one of the things we realize is that every student is unique. There's no magic bullet. Uh, students need to be able to make that connection to the future. And it's, that future is constantly changing. Um, but really at the core of what I dream about and what I want for every student that uses Zello is that they have a vision for their future, whether that be a career or a school they want to attend or a major they want to study, that that they're excited about and that gives them hope and that grounds them in what they're doing in school every day. They have a plan of where they want to go. And, and that's not easy, and, and, but that is our goal. That's what we want to achieve. And that's something that we work towards every day. So if I'm thinking about the dream, the dream for me is about making sure that happens. And yeah, we can go ahead. We'll talk a little bit now about what about the future of Zello and let's take a, a sneak peek into some of the things we've been working on so that you know what's coming up. Uh, and the first thing I want to talk about is our new resume builder. If, if Kristen from Sock Prairie is on the line, you'll be excited to see this update. We are currently working on a resume builder. Uh, and before we started this project, we looked at, I'd say, over 20 resume builders. There's lots of them online. There's a ton. Um, but we wanted to do something different. So unlike the you know, typical fill-in-the-field templates, what we, we realize is our context is different. We're dealing with students. And so we wanted to build an experience that, that was built for students that don't even know what the word resume means. It's all new. So as part of that resume building experience, we wanted to help students understand what is a resume, what's it used for, what do you need to consider when you're filling out, and really guide them through the whole experience of pulling that resume together. Okay, I won't have the kids exploding. They're not back till three, so I'm good. <laughs> uh, thank you. So, so that's super exciting. Uh, second thing we're working on is um, also work-related, which is a work-based learning module that's integrated right into Zello so that students and educators can manage all the work-based learning opportunities on offer at your district in one spot. So really what we're trying to do is build, you know, bridge, bridge that gap between the real world and education by surfacing work-based learning opportunities that you may have stored on pieces of paper, um, maybe it's in a program, maybe someone manages it, but put it all together in one place within Zello so that students can see how those opportunities relate to careers that are within Zello, things that they're interested in, and this will help them take advantage of those opportunities and hopefully look at the relevance of their education and develop more meaningful career goals and plans. So just so you know, right now, we have some early adopter districts that are using this module. So they're moving their database of business partners online, increasing that exposure and participation in their work-based learning opportunities. Uh, we're certain, soon gonna be supporting virtual opportunities, which obviously makes a lot of sense in the current environment. And all of this is going to be coming to you very soon. Look for this in the new year. Uh, we're still dotting a few I's, crossing a few T's and gathering experience from working with our pilot districts. Um, but we can say that I can tell you it's working really well and we're super excited to bring this piece to, to Zello as well. And then the last piece I want to talk about is our plans for a parent portal. So the vision for the parent portal comes from the idea that students can do a tremendous amount in Zello in terms of building their plan, but they can't do it all on their own. And our belief is that for a student to build a plan, make decisions and make real progress towards creating a successful future for themselves, they're gonna need the support of caring adults in their lives. And so we believe 
fundamentally in the power of conversation. Conversation between students and parents, conversation between students and educators and counselors and teachers. And that has to be able to happen in a way that is very um, fluid and interactive and simple and conversational. We don't want to make it serious. So we're working on building a system that will allow for a three-way, a four-way, a five-way conference, a commenting stream of conversation between parents and counselors and students that will help that student build their plan and understand where their strengths are or what others see in them that they can use to build a better plan. So this parent portal is really the first step to um, helping students build better goals and plans. For parents, what it's gonna mean is they'll have access to the system. They'll have access to their own account for Zello where they can experiment with it. They'll be able to see everything a counselor or an educator can see at the school. The parent will see the exact same view. And then there can be a collaboration between students, parents and counselors. So that's our vision for the parent portal and super excited uh, for that to be coming to you guys as well. All right, so we're now gonna move on to the AMA questions portion where we address questions uh, from you guys, the community. We're gonna start off with a few questions that were submitted uh, to us during registration and then we'll fire away on the questions that have been coming in um, in the Q&A panel. So we have a question from Jacqueline uh, who asked us, how can we gain student interest when we cannot meet with them one-on-one -on -one to explain the lessons and get them excited to explore. Um, so I think Jeff, um, you'd probably be the best person to answer this. Yeah, thanks so much. It's, it's a great, great, great question because we know ideally we're able to provide a blended learning model in the classroom where there's a combination of leveraging the best of the technology with the best of, of um, you know, a direct educator to student experience. Um, but we can't always do that. And, and I think what one of the key things that Jacqueline is, is getting at here is how do we introduce relevance for the student? How do we get them excited to want to participate in this activity? Um, I had a chance, I want to give some credit to my colleague Meredith, I had a chance to talk with her and, and just bounce some ideas around. So a few tips I, that we would suggest here. First of all, um, these days, when we're in and out of school and, and um, distance learning is a reality, we need to make the very best use of the precious time that we do have with students. And so what I mean is students can complete these lessons on their own, but what they can't do on their own necessarily is have the table set for the lesson um, or have a debrief after to really understand and put into context what they just learned. So the limited time that you do have available with students, we recommend that you use for those things to, to explain to the student the why for, for this lesson, why it's important. And that can be really quick, literally, you know, three, four, five minutes of questions, thought-provoking questions, sharing your own experiences to help students get a sense for why this activity is important for them. Um, so, so that's our recommendation and, and furthermore to help with that because we, we recognize this is a need in Zello support we have created some of you may have seen lesson resources so if you go to Zello support and look up the lesson resources there you will find exactly what I'm talking about in terms of discussion prompts or questions to get students interested we have some of the some of those available to you of course you can you can have your own questions but um, we have some thought starters for you in, in Zello support. If it, I'll just add, if you're really squeezed for time and you can't do it, you could of course share those questions uh, in an email or a message through Zello or even record them in a, in a brief recording and then post those for students. So, so there are ways to do it. Um, and again, uh, our, our suggestion would be to just lean on the lessons to guide students as much as you can and focus on the, the pre and post activity. A few things I um, wanted to share as well, just more generally, what should some priorities be for the school year? How, how do we help students if we are forced into a remote learning kind of situation again? Um, and so in addition to the very specific response we had for that question, just want to encourage um, these as some best practices. And we've talked about a few of them. So please sign up for the student dashboard if you think that would be useful for you and your students. We believe it 
it, it is really important because it does a better job of highlighting for students what they need to focus on. This second one is, is really, you would think so simple and straightforward, but just make sure it's really easy for students to get access to Zello. Uh, sometimes it just isn't, and that can be a deterrent. So we have lots of different ways of integrating um, through SSO with different tools that may be used in your district. So if you find that it's just not set up in the easiest way for students, please give us a call. We can talk through your options and try to figure out how to make that better. That could be as simple as just sharing some resources so you can make it a more prominent feature on your website. The SEL, SEL skills with lessons, we already talked about that. Using the assignments uh, as a replacement for ideally what you'd be doing in a classroom, but if you can't do it in the classroom, upload the assignment, make it available for students. This one, communicating often with students and families. I mean, as, as a parent who has lived through the past few months with my own kids, I just appreciate how much even the smallest interaction um, is helpful for, for my kids and I think for all students. So to be able to take the time and send a message or check in and, and communicate with students and parents, it, is, it, it makes a world of difference. One of the things that we'll inevitably face is that some things um, will get pushed aside. Some of the things that we like to do in education, um, but just may not be able to do because there are more pressing issues. So if, if you can effectively deploy Zello, if you can um, activate resources and set expectations for students, that can help us maintain that future, that culture of future readiness, which is so critical through what could be uh, a more challenging year. One other really important thing I think is just trusting what the tools can do. I would say the most successful districts that we saw in the spring and summer were districts that were already leveraging the tools in Zello. They were already using the reports. They were already using the messaging features. They'd already deployed the lessons. And so when they had to make an adjustment, they just leaned into those tools and got full value out of them. So, so let, let this, the software do as much work as it possibly can to, to help you and so that you can focus your efforts on the things that only you can do for your students. And the final thing is just obviously to take care of yourself. It's, it's gonna be a challenging year and um, your students and your, your loved ones need you to, to do well. There are a number of resources that we have referenced. You, and there's two central places to go to keep it simple. There's the Zello blog, which you can access from, from uh, zello.world. And there are just a ton of resources available there. At all of the uh, eBooks and the learning sessions, all of those resources are available for you to access and, and download. And then of course, the Zello support portal again, with a wealth of resources to, to support you. Um, and then we just also wanted to remind you that after this session, we will be sending around an email with links to a, a bunch of these resources um, just to make it easier for you. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, we have another question from Carrie who's asked, uh, this is our first year with Zello. We've had experience with career cruising only. Can you explain the similarities, differences? Matt, maybe you can take this one on. I gotta put my, get, take myself off mute first. Yes, absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Philza. Um, so yeah, comparing Zello to career cruising, I think the main thing is that we've taken something that's that's really complex and made it elegantly simple. Um, we really designed Zelle to be simple to you, but still giving you really powerful insights that, that students need to build successful futures. If we look at it from, you know, what is really different, um, first thing is Zello is built with that model that I referenced earlier in mind. So it's a three pillar model where you make it really clear about me is understanding yourself, exploring options is looking at what the world offers you in terms of options and then building your goals and plans. Really it's that model is to try to help students realize that um, when they're, when they're trying to plan for the future, it's, it's, it is a sort of a process. 
So the model is super important. The lessons that we've introduced and put into Zella are designed to help skill, students build the skills and knowledge they need to be successful, to fill in the gaps, the knowledge gaps and the skill gaps that are there that would perhaps prevent them from making good decisions. Um, the experience itself, Zello is just really, really fun to use. Uh, we've heard this, we, we keep hearing this, which is, which is really great. Um, so we wanna create wow experiences throughout the program. So I think that's a big factor. Uh, and then personalization. So everything about Zello is personalized. Um, there isn't really an experience unless you've logged in and it's your account because everything is about you. So those are the, those are the biggest differences I see um, when comparing the two. Um, you know, think about products you've used. The, if you think about Windows 3.1, for those of you who used it, and then you think about your iPhone, I think the experience is there's, there's that kind of level of difference, but it's hard to put your finger on, you know, specific feature by feature. It's more just what it feels like um, in the engagement level that provides. So that's been really important. If we just look at, uh, we, we wanted to know, okay, we can say it's better, but is it actually? So we did do a study um, looking in the state of Wisconsin at districts that were using, um, using career cruising that switched to Zello. Phil, if you can go to the next slide. Um, what we saw was that students were logging in three times as, as often with Zello. Um, they were 20% of the time logging in outside of school hours. So logging in at evenings and, and on the weekends, which was great. And they were doing more um, thoughtful and reflective exploration of the options that they had saved. So this has been um, consistent. When we look at the time on site that Jeff mentioned earlier, students are spending double, triple the time per login. Um, so I think we made a big quantum leap forward with Zello and definitely something that you can be confident in making that switch that your students will, will really enjoy that experience. All right, thank you, Matt. Um, so we have quite a few questions coming in from, from the audience. Um, so let's dig into those questions. Um, I just like to apologize in advance that if we don't get to all of the questions, um, please don't take it personally. We'll try our best. And uh, in case there's anything left that you really need answered, you can always email us at help at zello.world. Um, so the first question that we have, um, we have quite a few attendees who are new with Zello asking if we have any tips for getting started. Uh, Jeff, maybe you can take this one on. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Filza. I'll try to be quick, just to be respectful of all the questions that are coming in. Um, so I would say if, if you're new to Zello, I think one of the most important things to start with is, you know, they often say, start with the end in mind. Just thinking about what is success look like for you and your colleagues in the district? What would you like to accomplish with the program? Just being very, very clear about your goals. And if you're not sure, that's fine too. I mean, that's why we have success managers here to help you. And that's why we have resources like case studies that show what other districts have been able to accomplish. But just being really clear about what you would like to see happen in let's say year one, uh, because you, you might not be able to do it all at once if you have an ambitious plan. So. I think that kind of clarity is really important because then you have focus and, and then we can help guide you and say, these are the things that you need to do and really help you build a plan. Another thing that I would say is, is to share and involve others within the district. Um, our best, most successful districts have representation um, across the different functions. Uh, it could be CTE counseling, core curriculum, having everyone involved, whether you have actually a formal committee or not, um, you know, maybe that's not, not critical, but you don't want to be siloed. You want to get everybody involved because chances are there are people in the district who could find value in the program and you just not, may not be aware of it. So I think involving lots of people, setting really clear goals, working with us so that we can help you achieve those goals. And then, of course, I've seen lots of questions coming in about training and support. In, in Zello support, which I described earlier, there are tons of tutorials and videos and resources. There are also scheduled web events that you can sign up for. So there are lots of ways to get training in addition to the, the kickoff training that we provide specifically for your district when you're onboarded. So I would say goal setting, cross-functional collaboration, um, 
learn as much as you can about the, about the software. All right, thank you so much, Jeff, uh, for answering that question. Uh, so another um, theme that we've seen with regards to the questions coming in, we've uh, had lots of questions around reporting, especially reporting on student engagement and any new reporting features that clients can expect. For those of you that have submitted specific questions, we'll have our success managers follow up with you. But Matt, maybe you could give everyone an idea of some best practices for engagement reporting in Zello and an update on what's on the roadmap when it comes to reporting. Yeah, for sure. Um, Phil, so just before I do that, I've been chatting with um, our, our group behind the scenes here. I see a lot of really good questions coming in and I realize we're not gonna have time to get to all of them. Um, but my commitment to you is if you've entered a question we're going to get back to you within 24 hours with the answer. Um, if that doesn't happen and you still have questions outstanding, please feel free to email me directly or Jeff as well. Um, part of our commitment for you know you spending the time with us today is to make sure that you do get your answers. Um, I, I can, I've been typing in a few answers to a few people. I just can't help myself. Um, but I do want to make sure that any, any gaps in knowledge or any features that you're looking for um, that, we, that we make sure that you know how to use them. And if there's something missing, we understand um, what you're looking for. So that's just really important. But um, just want to let you guys know that. And in terms of um, reporting and engagement reporting, I think the one thing I just wanted to recommend is that if you haven't already, um, to take a really close look at the lessons uh, feature of Zello. Uh, and if you have no idea what lessons are, and believe me, I've had a number of meetings with clients where that's the case, don't feel like you're an outlier. If that's you, please do take the time to dig in because when I think about engagement and how students are using Zello, lessons combined with the dashboard, the new dashboard, really I believe is the best way to make sure your students are getting full value. Um, we're gonna put a link into the chat right now that you can access to give you a quick overview of lessons. Um, so, so basically, it, take a look at that if, you've, if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, to see what lessons are. But if, if take for a minute, if, you, if you're not familiar with them, lessons are um, things that we want students to do in Zello and you can set up whatever you want them to do. So if I'm a district, my recommendation for you is to say step one, configure lessons so they match what you want your students to do. Um, step two is to find a way to give students some time during the school year any time that you can provide is, is welcome. I know that it's a real challenge, but give them some time. And step three, just sit back and watch the progress that they make. The program really is engaging enough that it will draw them in. And if it's compelling enough with the new dashboard that they know what they have to complete, that I think you'll get tremendous results just from taking those three steps. Now, all students are not, it's not gonna magically solve every student's problem. So you'll be able to monitor progress through these lessons. You can message or speak with students that are falling behind and change your plans accordingly. Um, in terms of reporting, if you're looking for a specific report and you're not finding it, I do have people within our own company asking me for new reports and the report is actually already in existence. So sometimes that can happen. Um, contact us if you're looking for a specific report, we may already have it and we just need to point you to where it is. Um, but you know, that being said, there are a number of enhancements we're working on for reporting. So first of all, we want to have um, easier access to all reports that are available. We want to be able to search for reports by name. So that's coming. Um, we're going to reorganize the reporting dashboard based on what we've seen educators using from reporting. We're going to bring those items to the fore. Um, so that will be something coming as well. Uh, report, a report on volunteer hours will be soon available. Um, we're going to be doing reporting on the experiences that have been entered, so work experiences uh, and all types of experiences. So this is something we've been asked about. Um, we're also enhancing the ability to shift from student to student and view a student's result for a certain report and then see the next students. Right now, you can do that from the student list. This is called the neighbor nav, switch from neighbor to neighbor. Um, but it's not in all the reports. So this is a generalized feature that we're going to be bringing to all reports. For anyone who's had to go to a student and then back, student and then back, this will solve that problem. So I think that'll be a welcome addition. Um, we're looking at additional reports for college application tracking, the ability to save reports for easy access, and then better visualization of progress reporting for lessons. So 
lots is being planned and being worked on right now, um, which I think will be greatly appreciated as it lands. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, so before we move on to our third question, I'd like to ask the audience to let us know which of the updates we've covered are you most excited about? So I'm actually gonna launch a poll so that you guys um, get the option to vote. All right, so I'm gonna leave uh, it to you guys to answer the poll and I will share the results with you guys after we're done addressing all the other questions. Um, so now I'm going to move on to our third question. Uh, we have a question from Emily who's asking, should we expect any other large updates like this year's to take place in the next year? Um, Jeff, maybe you can um, answer this one. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll go as quickly as I can. So, um, you know, Matt did share some of the items on our roadmap and, and hopefully that helps prepare everyone a little bit for what's coming. The one thing about sharing roadmap items, as I've seen in the, in the Q&A, is it leads to as many questions as it does answers. And so we'll, we'll do our best to answer those specific questions about what's coming. Um, so, so you have a taste for that. But I would say the bottom line is, is yes. I mean, new releases will continue to come. We have a large backlog of things that we would like to continue to build to improve the lives of students and educators. So I, I think you can expect to see steady new releases this year and for years to come. Uh, also, now that we're through the migration process largely from career cruising to Zello, we're in a position where we can start to really break some new ground with Zello and it can accelerate and do some of the things that, that we've been hoping to do. Um, for those who worry about change, I wanna reassure you that we put a lot of thought into how we roll out new features. As you can see for the dashboard, it's an opt-in. So if a district doesn't want to move, if they love the status quo, that's fine. And, you know, that's just fine. So for anything that we release, you'll have lots of advanced warning. You'll have opportunities to learn about it. And in many cases, if it's actually going to impact your, your experience or the student's experience, you will have the opportunity to opt-in or opt-out. It's a similar thing with, with the Common App, where districts have the opportunity to participate or not. Um, Hope that helps. All right, thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, we have a question from Brittany uh, who's asking, when will the K-5 platform have the following options? So she, she's listed out three options. The first one, editing short answer responses after students submit them, uh, assigning students assignments to groups, and the third one is an entrepreneur mission similar to the other mission platforms. Matt, maybe you can take this one on. Yep, for sure. So editing short answer responses after students submit them. I, Brittany, I don't know if you saw my reply. You were one of the people I quickly uh, jotted down a note. So the challenge here is when I'm doing a mission or a lesson, I enter something and then I go on to the next question, but then I wanna go back and change my answer. So seems easy. Um, technically, it has proven to be a real challenge to get it to work consistently. Um, there's a couple things at play. One is that um, there were just to track progress properly so that we know where students are within a lesson is challenging. Um, that's working very well. But bringing in the back button, how do you deal with progress uh, is one challenge. The other challenge is that often within a lesson or a mission, um, there are dependencies so that if you do one thing earlier on in the lesson, that will have an impact on where you end up or what you're doing later in the lesson. So that complicates how would you manage a back feature where you could go back and change something which may have a dependency on something even earlier in the lesson. So Brittany, what I can say is that it's a, it's a known problem. Um, we looked at, can we tackle something like this back in June? Um, but there was no clear path forward for an elegant solution that would not be a substantial rewrite to, to what we've done. Um, so for now it is, uh, I, I totally understand your concern, um, but not something that we have an, a, an answer for how to solve it. Um, so anyway, that's the answer for that one. Uh, assigning students to, uh, Assigning students assignments in groups, this is for 3.5. I believe that is now launched, so that should be there. Um, 
anyone else on the line, Monica, Filza, or Dion? I, I believe that is now live. I'm just checking in with Kim, who manages that product. Uh, let me just make sure. I'll get the answer as we go along here. Uh, and I also heard from Kim, we do have an entrepreneurship mission plan. It's in the next batch of missions that we're looking to release. So that is definitely on the, the plans for release. I don't have a date for that, um, but we're looking at that. Can I go to the next one? Yeah, so we have uh, questions from Karen and Melissa and they're asking, when will the resume builder go live? Um, even an estimate will help. Yeah, so an estimate we have for potentially the end of September. It seems a little aggressive, um, but definitely this fall. So when we talk about New Year for Resume Builder, that means uh, it's gonna be this fall. I just don't have a, a exact date. There's still a few details to, um, to iron out, um, but it's definitely close. It's been under development for the last couple months um, and it's looking really good. All right, um, one last question from uh, Abraham, so maybe Jeff, you can take this one on. How can Zello help to increase parental involvement with their children's learning? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, obviously, as, as Matt mentioned, we, we are working on the parent experience and parent portal, and that is to bring parents into the conversation so that students, educators, and parents can all talk about the progress the student is making and all share comments to, to support um, that student's future planning. So, so obviously that tool will be a big part of that picture. Um, currently, um, students can share their profile with anyone, including uh, parents and guardians. So they're able to share their work and, and allow others to keep up to date on, on the progress that they're making. And then, you know, of course, um, Parents should be using the program as much as possible side by side uh, with their son or daughter at home. Um, we have letters and resources that districts can send home to parents to provide them with some guidance and, and let them know that this resource exists. So uh, that's, really, that's really best practice, we believe, is to see parents working uh, together with their child uh, in, in Zello. But there are those other ways as well, which is you know to directly share the profile, and then um, once the parent portal is released, then the parent can in, be involved and engage directly in conversations uh, with their student and with educators at their student's school uh, about their student's future. Those are some of the some of the main ways that come to mind. Thank you, Jeff. So we do have three more questions that have come in. Uh, so I just want to tell everyone that we're going to wrap up by 2.10 p.m. Um, there's a question from Maria who's asked, is the K2CC Spark now replaced with a Zello program? Great question. So K2CC Spark and what we offer as part of our K12 Zello solution, it's the same. We were really happy with the, with the K2 product. So we didn't feel there was a need to change it for it to be integrated with Zello and be at the level of experience that we wanted with Zello. So um, if you've been using the K2 version of CC Spark, that's the same offering that's part of Zello K12. All right, and we have a question from Jason uh, who's asking, what collaboration do you have with post-secondary institutions for supporting high school students' college planning? And what collaboration or features do you hope to build with post-secondary institutions? So in terms of our collaboration right now, we don't have direct relationships with the post-secondary institutions. Um, really, we've been part, you know, through our partnership with the Common App and, and Credentials, we're able to send them the documents they need to process uh, student college applications. We have had, um, obviously, a lot of, uh, thoughts about what we could do um, and even I, I think really with the work-based learning modules that were the module that we'll be releasing um, that's sort of like our first connection with the real world direct relationships in that case with companies and surfacing those details within Zello um, and in our minds it's not a big stretch to think about how that could be done with post-secondary institutions and forming a bridge a communication bridge um, you know, between colleges and students directly, I think there's a lot of value 
There's also privacy concerns um, and safety and, and data protection concerns that we've got to consider. It's definitely something we're thinking about, Jason. Um, I think if we were to do it, we'd want to partner with organizations who are already strong, have already built relationships because it could take years to, to kind of roll that out. Um, so if we can find a good partner to help um, in, that, in that mission, I think it would be really valuable. We have a question from Elizabeth who's asking, will you be adding features to the lessons so that teachers can provide feedback to complete to completed lessons and track which completed lessons they have reviewed? Yes, that is coming. Uh, there will be an option for indicating that you have reviewed the feature and also an opportunity to enter comments which will go to the student. And basically what we're looking for, if you're familiar with assignments, we are working towards making sure that those experiences for how you would monitor a student's progress with an assignment to be the same experience for what we offer for lessons so that it's, it's consistent and, and also what you'd expect. All right, uh, Mary has said, uh, personally, I would rather receive an alert because we don't have that many students who use Common App we rely on the notifications. When might email notifications be available? Mary, I don't have a date, but I know that this is a high priority. Um, if anyone else is on the line from Zello that has a, a, more, <laughs> a better answer, um, but yes, email notifications are really a, a big part of, um, of that workflow. So that is, that is high priority from what I'm, I'm aware of. All right. I don't have a date at this time. Um, sorry, just, uh, Phil, just going back up, one of the earlier questions. So we've got the resume builder date. Um, we do not have a date for parent portal at this point, um, but it's very high value. I'm really excited with what we're working on and we're trying to keep it as simple, but also as engaging as possible. Um, as we get a better idea of, of the timing, you know, that will be something we'll, we'll let people know. But at this point, I just don't know. We have another question related to the parent portal. Will the parent portal provide a place for parents to review, digitally sign a plan created by the student? As a follow-up, will there be an easily generated report to show students who still need parent approval? Yes. Uh, what our focus will be for year one, for this year with the parent portal and electronic signatures, is going to be on signing off on the four-year course plan. That'll be our first um, first focus, and it's it feels like that's our highest priority need. That will give us the model for then applying electronic signatures to an entire plan for a student. If, if you have a state requirement where you have to have an electronic signature for the portfolio or for the plan, that would be something we would also look, that would be sort of the second thing that we would want to deliver for. And one last question, for families with limited internet access, is there a way to download a lesson to complete it offline and then upload it with the results when next connected to the internet? We don't have that capability. Um, the whole use case of offline, how does Zello work offline? It, it does come up. I mean, we just submitted a bid for a countrywide system in, um, New, in New Zealand. And one of the requirements is, well, how are we going to serve the prison population? Um, and, you know, from, from New Zealand's side, they don't have an answer either. Um, so it's, it's not something we've solved at this point. It's not something where you can download a lesson and, and do what you're, what you're describing, unfortunately. All right. Thank you so much uh, for answering all the questions. I just want to quickly share the results of our poll. Um, so Matt and Jeff, if you can see, we have a really good mix of what people are excited about. Mm. <laughs> I, love, I love how close they all are. <laughs> That's good. That's very helpful. That's really good. Yeah, it's super cool. All right. Um, so I just want to wrap up and thank everyone from our audience for, for joining us today. We hope you've learned something new and feel more confident heading into the new school year. 
I also want to remind everyone who's interested in setting up the new student dashboard to get in touch with your success manager as soon as possible. And of course, if you have any questions or need support in any way, don't hesitate to uh, visit Zello support or reach out to our client solutions team at help at zello.world and we will get back to you within 24 hours as uh, Matt said. We will also have a recap blog uh, on this entire AMA webinar so you can visit our uh, blog zello.world slash blog and you will see a recap of this entire webinar and of course you're going to get the recording uh, through email. Thanks again and hope everyone has a wonderful week and a great start to the new year. Great and one last thing Brittany if you're still on the line if you could reach out directly to Kim Turnbull who's our product manager for the elementary product if you have more questions I think she'd be very interested in your feedback as well so her email address is Kim T at zello.world. So please feel free to reach out to her. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Matt and Jeff, for answering all the questions. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. Have a great start of year.